Our fetch monitoring transponder has been used to great effect all over the world's oceans and has become a trusted ocean science instrument. Nevertheless, we've made important advancements. I'm going to explain exactly what fetch AZA is and how it revolutionises the capability to measure minute changes in seabed subsidence and tectonic activity. Fetch has an integrated telemetry module which enables data to be acoustically recovered to the surface. It also has sufficient battery capacity for seabed deployments of many years. However, its capability to measure very small seabed movements has historically been compromised by the pressure sensors which drift over time. This drift can be equivalent to several centimetres per year, which is much larger than the seabed movements that we're trying to measure. Fortunately, there is now a way to measure this drift using a technique called ambient zero ambient, or more conveniently, AZA. This effectively produces a 100 times increase in the sensitivity of the instrument. We've now built this in-situ calibration technology into our latest version of Fetch, which means that it now has a pressure measurement capability to match its long life. So how does the AZA mechanism work? The key point to keep in mind is that a digital pressure sensor has an accuracy of plus or minus 0.01% of full scale, irrespective of the scale range. Consequently, a high pressure sensor, such as one we use for deep ocean measurement, is much less accurate in absolute terms than a low pressure sensor with a small scale range. The basic principle of AZA is therefore to conduct a regular in situ comparison between a high pressure sensor of several hundred bar and a low pressure sensor of just a few bar. So let's look at the AZA mechanism housed inside Fetch's glass sphere. This comprises three pressure sensors. Firstly, ambient, the high pressure sensor which is continuously exposed to the external ambient pressure. Secondly, zero, the low pressure reference sensor. And thirdly, the primary sensor, which is used to compare the other two sensors. In addition, there are two valves, ambient and zero or reference, which are used to isolate the different sensors during the comparison measurement, as well as a pressure adjustment pump, which is used to control the pressure inside the manifold. In its normal operating mode, the ambient valve is open and the zero valve is closed. This means that the ambient and primary sensors are both connected to the external seawater and measure the ambient pressure. When a reference measurement is initiated, the ambient valve is closed and the pump piston is withdrawn, reducing the pressure in the manifold until it is near to zero. We can then open the zero valve, which connects the zero and primary sensors together. At this point, the primary sensor bias can be accurately measured against the zero sensor. After completing this measurement process, the zero valve is closed and the pump piston is extended, which returns the manifold pressure back to ambient. Then the ambient valve is opened, which re-exposes the primary sensor to the ambient outside seawater pressure. With both ambient and primary sensors connected to the external seawater, the instrument is back in its normal operating mode. As you have seen, AZA effectively enables us to calibrate the system to the higher accuracy zero sensor, enabling us to measure sensor bias. This in turn is used to eliminate pressure sensor drift. The bottom line is that AZA is a game-changing technology that is sensitive to vertical seabed displacements of one centimetre or less per year. This is really quite amazing when you consider it can be deployed in depths down to 6,000 metres. If you would like to know more about how this technology could be used in your project, please get in touch.